What's going on guys? My name is Brandon. I've got a real exciting episode for you today. I've been looking around for an affordable AC DC TIG welder that I could weld aluminum with. Well, if you're anything like me, you've probably shopped around and you know that it's pretty expensive to get into AC TIG welding. Well, after doing months of research, I think I might have found what is probably the best deal on the internet to weld AC TIG aluminum. Stick around. All right, guys, th here it is, and this is the Yes Welder TIG 250P ACDC, and like I said, you can weld aluminum with this. Now, the one thing that prompted me to reach out to this company after doing research on a bunch of different welders is I already uh, have their plasma cutter, and I am super impressed with that. This is a screaming deal for this welder, guys. As of right now, the time of this uh, posting, this is $749.99 for a 250 amp AC-DC TIG aluminum welder, and it has pulse, pulse functions. You can weld aluminum, stainless, and it even comes with a foot pedal. And for stick welding, it's got hot start, easy start arc, probably so like arc force, I'm assuming. Here are the specs that you're gonna probably wanna know if you guys are interested in this. It comes with the, obviously the welder, it's a 250 amp welder. Oh, it's got a 26 style torch. Normally these types uh, come with a 17, but I think it's probably because it's a 250 amp that it's a little bit heavier duty than the 17 style. So it's 13 foot lead, uh, 10 foot electric holder, uh, earth 10 foot, so there's your work lead. Comes with a brush, the gas hose, uh, foot pedal. Comes with three collets, a collet body, a uh, ceramic cup, a back cap and a short cap so it looks like it's not coming with any uh tungstens so we'll see what it comes with and what you may have to purchase separately we'll just kind of set everything else aside and just kind of like unbox it as we go what else is in here i heard some okay here's the foot pedal Oh, the cord's nice and flexible. It's not that like a uh, hard plasticky. Sometimes uh, the cords will be like a real hard plastic, like cheap cover. And this is kind of like a rubber. So I'm liking that. Yeah, for, you know, 750 bucks guys, this is a smoking crazy deal. To be able to be up and running aluminum with an inverter base machine, that's pretty impressive. Just looking at this right off guys, this is everything that comes with it. So. They've got a nice torch lead. We'll start opening this stuff up right here. Foot pedal over here. Uh, here is your stick welding electrode holder and earth ground. That's gonna be used for TIG and for stick welding. Gas hose. So right off the bat, I can see uh, it even comes with uh, some thread Teflon tape and some directions. We'll, we'll check out and see how good those are. All right, so right off, what I see is you're lacking a flow meter. So you'll have to pick up a flow meter if you don't have one because you're gonna wanna run typically argon gas with an aluminum welder. Uh, what else, what else? Uh, oh, and this is set up for uh, 220 only. So this welder comes with your standard uh, welder plug on the end. So if you have an inverter-based welder or even a transformer-based welder and it's 220, that's this. Uh, but the issue I can see is that it doesn't come with a cord adapter. Now, to adapt this to 110, it's, it is gonna limit your amperage. So this machine, being a 250 amp welder, this will uh, easily weld quarter inch aluminum on 220. But you're gonna be limited on your amperage. If you don't have 220 in your shop, you're gonna need an adapter plug. Now, if you have other inverter welders, then you're all set because most inverter welders come with that adapter plug. This one did not, so. Uh, and what we will do is we will actually plug an adapter onto this, plug it into 110, and see how many amps this will go up to on 110. We'll test that here in a few minutes, but. I wanna open up this stuff, take a look at it. Uh, so far, I'm impressed, but we'll see. All right, so this is kind of important to me on directions and how directions are laid out and if I can understand the directions. Sometimes uh, imported welders don't have the best of directions and when they do, 
uh, it's kind of, uh, there's a loss in translation between uh, the languages. So it's nice, we got some symbols here that they're gonna reference, arc force. Uh, yeah, these are good directions actually. It's got a bunch of different charts on what you're welding. So AC pulse TIG, AC TIG, DC pulse TIG, DC TIG, then MMA, which is stick welding. So I won't use this for stick welding, guys. There's just other machines that I have that are dedicated. And it's kind of like one of those things with these types of welders, guys, although they're a combination welder, generally they do one thing better than the rest. And because this is marketed as a AC, DC TIG welder that also has the capability of stick welding. It probably does best on AC DC TIG welding and it probably does okay on stick welding. So kind of like what I have over here guys, this is my Transteel 2200. Now this is a, a three in one machine. This will do wire feed welding. So it'll do flux core and it'll do shielded gas welding. It also does stick welding and it'll also do TIG welding, but it's, main purpose in my shop is a wire feed welder and I'm running it on C25 gas. If I need to do the other things, it can, but that's kind of this machine's primary function in my shop. Even though I can do other things, this is set up primarily to do wire feed welding because it does it really, really, really well. So for now, I'm just gonna get some of the things out of the way that we don't necessarily need and we'll start getting this thing set up. So we have our torch body so we gotta looks like we gotta put that together not a bad selection it comes with a stubby back cap and it comes with a long back cap throw the collet body in it so we'll thread this into here okay throw that on and now we'll throw on our cup. This one is a six. What's it? Six, five, four. Probably, probably, probably. It doesn't say it, but yeah, it's a five. So six, five, four. So I'm going to throw a six on it. Boom there. And now we're going to do our tungsten size. So what does it come with for collets? Okay, 16th collet, 8th collet, and what, 330 seconds? Yeah, 330 seconds. So we're going to go with the 330 seconds collet. I should have some tungstens for this. Let me go look and see what I got. But yeah, I've got a good selection. So as of right now, you'll need to buy a set of tungsten, and you'll also need to buy a flow meter. I like to keep all my parts for my TIG welders together in a container. That way I know what's what, and it just makes it easier when I go to grab it. So um, I've got some Blue Demon Tungstens. This is good stuff. These are multi-mix. You can use these for everything. You can use them for uh, stainless steel, carbon steel, aluminum, AC, and DC. So that'll be good. Uh, I got some 16th inch, 1% uh, lanthanated. That's not good. 2% thoriated, uh, that's not good, that's for DC. And the great thing about these multi-mix guys is that they're not a carcinogen. Some of these tungstens actually are radioactive, they have a bunch of hazardous chemicals in them. These ones aren't, so that kind of makes it nice. So to get set up, you're actually gonna need to pick yourself up some tungsten electrodes, you're gonna have to pick yourself up a flow meter, and you're gonna need some filler metal. So, but that's basically it. So I'll have links to all that stuff down below. And I'll also have a link to this welder down below too, as well, so you guys can check it out. You just wanna save yourself, uh, you know, some health risk. So make sure you're wearing a respirator and I like to handle it with gloves too. There's all kinds of ways you can sharpen your tungsten. And the way I choose to do it is I use the side of my grinder wheel. Probably not the right way to do it, but that's how I do it. Uh, Cause I don't use the side of the wheel to do anything else. So it's never had contamination from metal on it. And I put on a leather glove just so it doesn't slip and like drag the rubber glove into the wheel. All right, and there we are right there. And then feed our tungsten through. 
then screw on our back cap. This is a long back cap. Uh, you can get a shorter back cap uh, for these. Sometimes it makes it a little bit easier to, to handle. And we'll put our stick out uh, about a quarter of an inch or so. And then just snug that back cap up and that's what holds the tungsten in place. You don't have to go crazy, just cinch it down just a little bit. There, there's that. Let's see. We will undo this. Pretty straightforward. I mean, you don't use any thread tape on this because this is a compression style fitting. So, just take off this little cap right here. And just screw this into it. This is for if you use the off on feature for this, but we're gonna use the pedal. So I'm gonna not connect this up. We'll just kinda tuck that back into itself and hook the foot pedal up to it. So you can only go, yeah, it can only go in one way, so you can't really mess this up either. It's a little notch at the top. You can see that little notch on that. That just goes into that, like that. Just snug that in. There, now our foot pedal's hooked up. These connections are all typical um, connections that you'd find on any TIG rig setup. So I am just actually taking the gas hose off the back of uh, one of my other welders and then I'm just gonna run it directly to that. Just to save me from having to take apart the connection here. It's already made there. And you can see how, again, this is just a compression style fitting. So you don't need any thread tape. I'm not sure why they sent thread tape. I don't, I don't think you should use it. That's my understanding, but I could be wrong. And you should make sure that you use two wrenches when you tighten these types of connections so you're not loosening or tightening the fitting inside uh, the cabinet. That's good. We'll check it with some soapy water. You can do that with uh, non-flammable gases. Use soapy water, but with flammable gases, you shouldn't be using any type of uh, soapy water on them. All right, now it's time to hook up your work lead or ground or working lead or earth or whatever you want to call it. And that goes to positive because whenever you're welding aluminum or just like steel, uh, DC electrode negative. So electrode is automatically in the negative, so you would put your working lead or earth or ground, whatever you want to call it, into positive. Just like that. Now the first thing you want to do is stand off to the side. Now with these flow meters, you got to be careful when you turn these on because this bulb will actually bounce right up and hit the top of the gauge and you don't want it to break and you don't want to be standing in front of it because, you know, 2000 PSI of gas coming out, if this gauge should pop, something should go wrong, you don't want to be in the line of fire. So turn it on slowly, real slow. There it goes, just like that. Turn it on all the way. So now we're gonna plug this in. I'm putting this on 220 volt to start out with just so we can run it through its paces and then we'll see, you know, the amperage go all the way. It should go up to uh, 250. And then we'll try it on 120 and see how far it goes up. So turn it on in the back. And if everything is right, the front indicator panel should be on. It is, okay, good. see here you can bring the air amperage all the way up to should go to 250 if we're doing it right yep now we'll set our gas so we'll, I've got the pedal right here down at my foot I'm gonna hit the pedal and then we'll adjust it to 20 CFH actually hold the pedal down there it is 20 CFH right there all right, so now I'm gonna have to uh, try to go through these settings and try to figure out what some of these mean. So uh, so th we gotta set our tungsten size. So you can see here, 330 seconds is equal to 2.4 millimeters. So that is one of these 
on this dial face. So AC balance, slope down, stop. I'm not sure what that one is. We'll look. Uh, there it is right there. So that would be your electro diameter. So we already know 2.4. So we're good there. And what? So I'm going to have to do some reading and see what these settings are so we can set these appropriately. So we've got 2T mode. I know what that is. That's basically you just press the trigger and it ignites when you let off the trigger it extinguishes 4T, press the trigger, it's, and then you can let off and it stays ignited. And then you press it again and it turns off. So 4T is kind of like cruise control. That's the way I think of that. And then spot function, we'll read more about that. So 2T, that's what we're gonna run this in. So I figured out these modes. So that's AC TIG, AC pulse TIG, DC TIG, DC pulse TIG, then stick. That's what that does. Let's clamp down a piece of this aluminum that I've got. I haven't cleaned it or anything yet, but let's clamp down a piece of aluminum to our fixture table. Uh, we'll get it all cleaned up and then we'll just try to run some beads on it and see how it goes. If you guys wanna see how I built this uh, fab table, I built this myself out of a piece of scrap metal and I built all these clamps and everything. I'll have some links up above, you guys can check it out. But this is a super handy type fixture table that you can build on the cheap and you can pretty much bring it any, anywhere. This is pretty heavy, but I mean, this could be kind of portable and I have it supported up uh, off the table with some, I think it's just one inch square stock welded to the bottom with a frame underneath it. That way I can actually clamp my earth ground lead or whatever, work lead, whatever you want to call it to the side of the table. Plus I can clamp right to the very edge. But, and we'll even use the brush that they give us, so. Now aluminum has a real thick oxide layer on it that you have to scrape away and you do that with a stainless steel brush. You can also pick yourself up some acetone too. You got to clean it real good. That's the issue with uh, aluminum is that you just you got to clean it. You got to clean everything. You got to clean the you got to clean the filler metal, you got to clean the part, but what we're going to do is we're just going to run it without any filler rod right now. Make sure your acetone is out of your welding area too, because this stuff is super flammable. And like always guys, you want to be concerned about safety. You want yourself a good welding helmet. You want to be wearing a respirator. Get yourself some decent gloves, some preferably TIG gloves, not just regular welding gloves. TIG gloves are a lot thinner than a regular welding glove, so you have better dexterity. And these are just cheap Harbor Freight gloves, but they're really comfortable, so. All right, uh, let's just uh, turn it on and try it out. We'll set it for uh, 200 amps on the pedal, and we'll just go from there and see what happens. a little better. Let me switch it over to AC Pulse and see how that, if there's any difference there. Kind of neat, huh?
Wow. The tip's all balled up, but boy, it's doing a hell of a nice job other than the crater at the end, and that's a setting that I gotta mess with. Uh, I'm trying to back off the pedal a little bit at the very end, and that could just be me uh, not backing off the pedal good, but I'm trying to like decrease, and I think it might be a setting, but this was kinda gonna be more like an introduction to this welder today, guys, and I'll tell you what, I am super impressed so far. Uh, I'm gonna try to just, run a couple more beads just to kind of get the hang of this um, because this isn't something I do every day but that crater is a little bit of a problem but even with it all balled up it doesn't seem to be giving it a problem at all it actually looks pretty good so or at least in my opinion and I'm far from the best at at TIG welding or even welding in general but I I'm trying so let's give it one more go here So the key to this, guys, is to not add your filler metal until it, uh, I think I, yeah, I just dipped it. All right, I got to clean it. I got talking and sidetracked. So the key is to not add your filler metal until you're actually ready uh, to start welding. You want to make sure that you've actually melted the base metal and that a puddle starts forming before you start introducing this. Because if you introduce this too soon, it's kind of like... Uh, if you guys have ever soldered a pipe uh, and then you just hold the solder in front of uh, the pipe and melt the solder, it just starts dripping all over the floor. Well, that's what it'll do with uh, this as well. It'll just start dripping, but you can see how I dipped the tungsten here and it made a hell of a mess. So we'll have to clean that up. I'll wire brush this down, resharpen this, and then we'll go at it again. And another little handy thing I forgot to share with you guys that's real handy when you're TIG welding is obviously do your point whatever you need on the working end of it and then leave the color side of it but put on a real quick point on the end of that as well just something steep not to not to actually weld with you could you could flip it the other way and use it but I like to leave it uh, on there so I know what color it is but if you put a drastic point on the end of this you never have to take your back cap off uh, to, to take your tungsten in and out it'll just taper in into the collet if you leave it blunt uh, sometimes they don't go in that easy so just a little tip to help you guys out so yeah so there we go let's uh, give this another go Yeah, I'm still working on getting that crater a little bit better, guys, towards the end. I need some practice, but you know what? This tells you that it's been about 10 years at least for me, uh, actually probably more, probably more like 15, since I've TIG welded aluminum. And like literally out of the box, you guys can get going with this. I, I've got to mess with the settings a little bit more and read more about this welder um, to try to fill that crater. I'm sure there's a setting on there or something that I'm doing wrong that's not right. Um, I think I need a different tungsten, so I'll have to try something like that. But this weld right in through here looks really good. I have a little bit of porosity here, so I'm not sure if that's something with the uh, tungsten balling up or what the deal is, but I gotta figure out getting that crater filled. But yeah, this is just a decent welder for the price, guys, to get set up with a welding aluminum. I'm just blown away. Like, you generally, uh, if you've looked around or you guys have considered getting into aluminum welding, you cannot get into aluminum welding for pretty much double this. You know what I mean? It's going to be double that cost. Twelve to fourteen hundred dollars is generally what it's going to cost you for a decent uh, AC TIG welding machine, let alone one that actually has pulse TIG and all the other features that this has. So. And another thing that I like too is that the fan only kicks on when it needs to. A lot of the inverter welders, you plug them in, they just turn on constantly and the fan runs nonstop and it's allowed and it's irritating. But yeah, I'm gaining guys and it's not looking all that bad considering. This is one of them when we first started out that I was just, um, you know, it was autogenous, meaning we wasn't adding any filler. Same thing here. 
Uh, these were the first two arcs I struck. And then this was the third one. This is where I was adding filler along here. And that's the little crater I'm talking about. I noticed I actually went through uh, and was watching the videos. And I think part of that is I don't have the right torch angle. It felt like I did when I was using it, but I obviously don't. I was really steep. Um, you should be probably no more than maybe 15 degrees, roughly, if I had to guess. And I just had it uh, leaned over a little too much. And that wasn't the proper way of doing it. But uh, this really isn't an instructional video. I'm just trying this out of the box to show you guys maybe what you could expect for results. And then I'm adding filler metal here as well. You can see I got a little bit of a crater. So I think if I stand the torch up a little bit more, that's going to have a tendency to blow this away less. And I think I need to work on practicing on backing off my amperage, letting off my pedal, and adding a little bit more filler metal before I terminate it. So, yeah. But all in all, not too bad. Like, these are the first welds I've struck on aluminum in 10 years. So, uh, if I can do it, guys, you can too. I'm nobody special. Um, I'm just like you guys. And this is pretty much all a learning curve for me as well. But... The one thing we want to know, what happens if you do it on 120? So this is just a typical welder plug to 120 volt plug here. So, and it doesn't come with this. Uh, maybe there's a reason why, maybe it doesn't work. I've never tried this guys. I don't know how this will work. So again, this is right up my alley. We're experimenting. This is a dedicated uh, outlet, 120 volt, 20 amp. Uh, there's really nothing else plugged into it right now. It's on maybe a 20 foot cord, so that is going to reduce uh, some of the voltage or amperage to the plug. And now we'll plug the welder directly in that. So we are now on 120 volt. So I want to show you something, guys, and I'm hoping that you can see it okay. You see how the tip on this is all balled up? Now that's really not what you want it to look like. You want that, when I say balled up, you want it to, to be somewhat at a point with just a little tiny glob at the bottom, not with this big uh, dauber on there. That's, I mean, these, these rods work, they do okay, but there are better ones. Like a 2% lanthanated would be a good rod to use for this. And I've got some other ones that I just put in on order that'll work a little bit better. These will work, uh, these Blue Demon ones, but they're probably not ideal. <laughs> I also noticed watching the video that I didn't do an overly great job uh, trying to keep a nice centered shot so that you guys could kind of see what I'm doing. Uh, my next step I got to work on is you guys really want to see arc shots and I, I just really honestly haven't put a whole lot of effort into making that happen but I can promise you guys I will make sure that very soon you guys get some uh, real good arc shots because it is kind of nice to see uh, what I am seeing exactly through the hood. And although I think I mentioned it, I don't know as if you saw me doing it, uh, you should also clean off your filler rod as well. That's kind of why I lean it up on like the clamp so that the end of it over here is not touching the table and picking up any contaminants. And again, make sure your acetone and your rags and everything else is uh, out of the area. Actually, guys, that's actually a good point uh, for me to bring up to you. So you see this uh, container down here? This container right here, it's just nothing fancy. It's just a metal bucket. And you can see it says stain and solvent rags on it. I put stuff like that in that bucket um, that way because a lot of these solvents and chemicals can spontaneously combust and uh, you want it in an airtight container. So get yourself a metal bucket. Don't just throw this in with your general trash because all it takes guys is one little tiny spark and then your shop goes up in flames and you guys don't want that. So grab yourself a little bucket, it's cheap and make sure you have a fire extinguisher in your workshop. All right, let's turn it on. I'm curious to see how this is gonna work guys. I don't even know if it will, but we'll see. All right. I don't think it's gonna, it's flashing 104. All right guys, so that will not work. So now we know. That solved that mystery guys. So if you buy this welder, you're gonna have to have 240 volt in your workshop. You cannot hook it up to one of those adapters like I was kind of hoping. So sorry about that, it is what it is. So 
like I said, it needs a lot of amperage to punch through that oxide layer on top of that. So let me just run one more bead just for the heck of it. I am going to go in depth with this welder for you guys and very specifics of what each and every setting on this does. I'm gonna work on trying to get this crater filled at the end, guys. And there it is right there. That's what I just did. I had to go to 200 amps uh, to get it to, to start. And I'm still not sure if I'm showing which cycle is on for the Hertz. If it's, if on the indicator, I'm actually showing the on cycle or the off cycle, but I need to know which one. And the crater really isn't any better. I think it's my action on the foot pedal, but gaining guys. I mean, I'm not perfect, but I mean, definitely this looks pretty good for a beginner, you know, first time around. It's been a long time since I welded aluminum. And that's all there is to it, guys. So for around 750 bucks, call it 800 bucks after you go out and buy your flow meter and your tungstens. For around 800 bucks, you have yourself a full AC TIG welder that you can weld aluminum, you can weld steel, and you can even stick weld with it. So in my opinion, that is a screaming deal. And I'm going to get a little bit better on this welder and figure out all the features, and I will do an in-depth review of this welder talking about what each setting does and you know if you change the sine wave from you know this frequency from this to this what is the difference why would you do it and whatnot i'm going to get really in depth with this hopefully this will be like a beginner welding series for this welder if you decide to purchase one of these and you'll know right out of the box how to use it and how to set it up I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're wondering what I'm working on before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below. New videos every Friday. Please like, comment, and subscribe. So until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care. Stay safe. See ya. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye.